All right, so there you go. That's the Claris, the WL3, a new model. Um, beautiful Sportio. Blue sky, hot day again here at the nurseries. Absolutely so warm. Um, I actually had my windows open in my caravan last night. So today as I'm recording this is Sunday. Uh, oh gosh, how are we doing? And a little bit of an unusual one this one. We normally don't have many people come on on a Sunday, but we've got a few guests arriving and they're all here for a week, um, six days, seven days. So I'm gonna have a frantic 11 till one o'clock mow session. So the people that are coming for a week, I do like to make sure that um, their pitches are mowed uh, well, well, whilst I can. And we've also got back at home, uh, Sandra sent a message this morning that the scaffolding is coming down on the roof, which is um, good. There's, we've got a bay window, we still need some tiling and doing on it, but, um, but the main scaffolding is coming down, the roof has been done. And I think Sandra has said she managed to get up on the roof. I'm not too sure how she's done that. She must have been up the ladder and up the scaffolding. And Bonnie, hello Bonnie. You've sent a coffee over for a Neil McGregor. Hey Neil, how are you doing? Thank you ever so much for that. And I got a super thanks um, from, oh, Masha, where are you going? A super thanks from John Luftus. John, thank you ever so much for sending over the super thanks. Um, much appreciated. Right, I'm gonna get the girl back, open up the office, get, um, get all the paperwork sorted out for today. And, um, Let's see what today brings. Step mothers. And the bins. Uh, compress all that lot down with a bit of weight. Well, not well, I've not really got a lot of weight really. I'm quite skinny. But uh, let's go and have a, a jump in the bins. Right, so whilst um, we're waiting for the departures, it's a pod turnover day again. Um, oh. So the guy in here for a couple of nights who, uh, he'd been to, a, I'm not so sure what his role was, but he'd been to a, a local wedding. Right, bedding off and uh, clean bedding on and uh, yeah, right. keep going. Next job now, both mowers are out, what have I got? Half dozen people coming on this afternoon that are on for a week um, so priority is just get their pitches mowed just put that a mow and then basically start getting around the touring but before I do the mow I'm just going to go and quick do a quick stone check before uh, before we do anything else you don't want to be hitting stones with your mow <sighs> muck munchers do you remember the muck munchers so I am putting these regular muck munchers into um, into the system. Are they doing anything? Are they not? The one thing that does seem to be noticeable is the smell. Definitely, the septic tank is, seems definitely to be less. Who knows? Right, let's get on this mower and uh, sweat. There has been an absolute abundance of clover this year. Um, it wasn't like that last year. Uh, obviously, you, you always get clover, but this year I've got—I don't know what's going on. Absolutely tons of clover, uh, and then this back edge here. Um, I don't know. Get, get start this afternoon. This has had a prolific growth spurt on it. It's a bit like the ones we were doing the other day. Sorry, I've got insects all over me. Um, so that's going to be cut back um, over the next couple of days and also this year green fly um, there seems to be more green fly um, don't know whether if you're outside whether you're noticing these things and we have got a fair few butterflies about but there doesn't seem to be as many butterflies this year <sighs> what is it like where you are the sun is beating down sorry we're in for a allegedly um, Thunder showers later, 
So a bit of a frantic, uh, frantic old cut. But yeah, clover. I have no idea why there's so much clover this year. Okay, okay. Let's um, let's start me mower up and carry on. Mow, mow, mow. Fill the up, strimmer up and put some more line on it um, and I'm just going to go and trim by the lodges what I started yesterday, finish that off then um, I'm going to get onto the Steger and give that new turf a lower cut uh, but we'll just go and do the uh, straggly bits and then the bit, of, uh, the bit of edging around both the lodges. Let's start this up and work up the spring. Right. So if you remember last time, here was um we couldn't get to and over in that corner there. So that's all trimmed down now. Uh, and then oh, warm, very warm. And then just down on the base there as well. So got all that down with the trimmer. I'm just gonna go and do uh, the back of the pod, only take a minute. Then we're going to bring the uh, Steger over here and get this uh, to get this one cut down. So much water. Right, quick sit down for five. Check for any messages and other bits and bobs in the office. Uh, and then I'm now going to be hovering around the barrier. Um, just keep an eye open for. Um, Who's coming in this afternoon? Yeah. Once I've, uh, once I have got that cut, I will be getting the hose pipe out. And here's my girl, sat in the garden. That's where you should be, Rasha. Sat in the garden, under your tree, in the shade. Right. Like, go on, no barking. Let's go. Come on, can I grab a pie? Can I grab a pie? What are you doing? Go on then. Got a treat. Hmm? At least you sat outside. That's like being sensible, Rasha. It's way too warm. Oh, actually, it's not too bad in here. But, uh, right, yeah, where are you going? You going up there, there you go, have a little one of them. And literally, as I went in, I got a bleep on my phone. Bonnie, Bonnie, hello again, Bonnie. You've sent another coffee over. And you want me to give a shout out to Lee. Hey Lee, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'll share my pork pie with you. But, well, unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan, but yeah, unfortunately I can't share uh, my pork pie. My youngest son is called Lee. Um, yeah. Right. Call up these. Jump on the Steger. News first check in. And really nice when you sort of see a face, you go, Were you here last year, weren't you? And if my if my memory serves me correctly, you're from France, aren't you? Yeah, same couple. Uh, yeah, they just said what a great time they had last year and everything. So um yeah, they're back with us. Pitch number 16 for a week. So this is why I have this frantic. We need to get these pitches ready, uh, that's why we need people gone at 11 o'clock. I've got a two hour window to get so much done in. Um, anyway, all those arrival pitches are done. So I was, I was just mowing here and I'm just done with the Steger. I've had a, a real low cut now and this side has had its first proper low cut. Yeah, hello Russia, how are you? You under your tree? Uh, I've got the hose pipe out, so once I've just done this last Steger cut, I'm going to attach the hose pipe, give the plants here a drink, some of the turf at the back of the lodges where the sprinkler doesn't get to, give those a, a, a hand out in, and then um, put the sprinkler on for a bit. <sighs> Dramas. So we just had a van that's left um, site a day early. There's a, it's another one. This is, this is the third or fourth in a week. There's been um, somebody at home's got poorly. So they've had to go home a day early. And just as they're pulling off, the van's 
basically just come off the um, tow bar. Unfortunately, it was the gate here, so we've uh, managed to use the trolley jack, lift it up. The jockey wheels collapsed, um, but when they get home, um, they'll just have to reverse it on and get some bricks underneath there and borrow a jack off somebody. But that could have been a lot worse. At least it happened here, where we were able to help them um, get back on the road. And the other thing is the breakaway cable broke. And technically speaking, by law, well, not even technically speaking, by law, you have got to have a breakaway cable. I should mention to Mark to carry a couple of breakaway cables. Uh, I have got one spare one in my van in case that ever happens. So, yeah, a whole bit of drama. All right. <laughs> it never stops here at the nurseries in Mumby in Lincolnshire. Right, so I've just got one last check in and waiting for it. Just had two arrive one after the other, and then another one on its um, on its own a, a couple of minutes earlier. So I've got the hose pipe out, and I've just been manually hosing some of the areas that I need need an extra drink basically, and then I'm going to get the sprinkler. I think I'm going to start on the other side first. And then give this a give this a good glug. Uh, that's his first proper that's his first proper low cut. Taking shape, isn't it? Another um, another three or four cuts on that, then it'll be looking absolutely amazing. Watching the world go by, sat under a favourite tree in the shade. Hey, you're actually, you've you been on guard. Good girl. Won't be long. Finish work soon. Right. Sprinkler on. And now I'm going to get back onto the mower. I've seen my butterflies before. There's a cabbage butterfly. Does it keep does it keep the flies away? That is the question. Right, can you see that? I've never had this before. It says I've got an elevated heart rate of 116 over 102. That, what the hell is an elevated heart rate? <laughs> Am I about to die? Cutting grass? As a campsite warden, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, elevated heart rate. That's touring uh, three quarters cut to finish off tomorrow. Sprinkle a move from there to here. Uh, so let that, if I was going to, yeah, let that have a sprinkle now for a bit. Then get the watering can out and hand water. Some of the pots and plants that we've got dotted around and uh yeah pretty well i think pretty well all the hard standing is um full on the site so yeah excellent and tomorrow it's a bit of a weird monday it's like a bit tomorrow monday is gonna be a bit like a normal sunday so another lamp torch work light from claris the WL3. If you've been watching my vlogs, you'll see I've reviewed a number of these, and these have been absolutely ace. Um, this one's a little bit unusual <clears throat> that it is a torch, but it's more of a, a work lamp than a torch, as um, as you're going to see very very shortly. So it's got um, a super bright light on it. Uh, it's got USB. Um, every time I do a product review, my phone always bleeps, doesn't it? It's got um, a USB charger on it, so you can charge out, like uh, if you're camping, you want to charge your phone. It's got a uh, flashing red light, pulsating light, um, tripod socket. It's got some super duper 
settings here um, on the brightness the lumens which I'll try and show you um, and this is the box that it all comes in and uh, we'll have a look in the box so as I'm recording this it's midsummer here in England the UK it doesn't really properly go dark but what I will do is later when it gets dusky I will fire this up and we will come back and um, and have a look at it so I have charged this up and I have been playing with it for the last couple of nights so also on the box this is the colour that you can see the colour of the other light so quick unbox and see what's in here it's all fairly straightforward so you've got yourselves uh, a USB charge cable you've got yourselves your instructions and a really nice Claris little pouch with a lamp in the way you check this out so it's not a torch like as in a, uh, a tactical flashlight as such it's more of a work light I'll do it this way around and there it is so the first thing that um, struck me is the build on this the, the actual build on it it's 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 rugged it's really really rugged and it's got some weight to it um, it is 13 and a half thousand milliamp battery in here I think it's uh, something like five and a half hours battery life on it and it's a thing of beauty isn't it um, it's a really nice design on it okay so at the top here USB so this is where you charge the unit up but you can also plug in here and take a USB charge out to charge up a device so if you want your phone charging as an example you can use this as a mini power bank so this 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 is charged up and the rubber just fits there like this the handle is on a ratchet system it's got a fantastic tripod mount so you can screw this onto a tripod mount if you wanted to it's got a clasp for mounting it and the base here is magnetic so if you wanted to um, keep this in your in fact I will probably keep this in the boot of my car um, if you keep this into your car and you've got a breakdown you can put it onto your bonnet shine a torch down or if you need to change a wheel and things like that it's um, this is this is magnetic so these are your um, buttons on the back to turn on and off you have to press this twice this button here is for the red flashing light oh, scratch me nose a bit of, uh, a bit of hay fever um, and this one here is how you adjust the brightnesses so as you can see on here I don't know if you can see or not um, it's got all the the settings it's gonna be quite hard to actually demonstrate this at the moment because it is so bright outside um, so first of all to turn the light on you need to do a double click on here I will click this down and then you can see the brightness is all, all altering on here and then what you can do you see on the back here you can hold this button down here and that will give you the red light and then you can have it as a red flashing beacon you can also have the white light and a flashing beacon as well so then you can see the brightness possibly not altering on the, on here um, <clears throat> if you wanted to when you're on on here you can alter the shading I'd, I don't know whether there's a, a, a technical word for this so this is like a, a, a yellow very yellow soft glow to it then you can go a bit brighter then you can go to a, a warm white and then you can eventually go to a bright light but we will have a look at this a little bit later on when it's um, a little bit darker because it's um, it's just a little bit hard to see everything out here in the fantastic it's been an amazing summer so far hasn't it so that's looking at this in the daylight 
and again what we are going to do we will come back to this under the cover of darkness and all being well you'll be able to see some of the functions and features here which I can't really show you at the moment because it's too light but yeah it's been um, uh, each of these Claris products I've, I've had have been great and again if you come and visit me where I work here at the nurseries and you see me doing the hush walk you'll notice I carry one of the Claris tactical lights with me so okay let's come back when it gets a little bit darker shall we right Shh. it's dark or sort of dark it's just after 11 p.m just been watching uh, Elton John the Glastonbury right this Claris torch <clears throat> we're gonna have a look at it now it's dark there is a link in the description if you want more information uh, or want to buy one or anything like that so you, you know to do the usual thunk so my ambient light that I'm using ooh, is this little Claris torch <clears throat> so that's what is now I'm using as the bat light I'm gonna have a look at this one so to turn it on double click and all being well now you can see some of the LEDs at the back of here press this button here and you can scroll through the brightness of the light and again you see the blue light changing I don't know if you can see that or not not easy filming this so what I'm trying not to do is dazzle dazzle you all and then if you hold it again it, it turns off this one here this one isn't too bright that's a single red light press it again and you've got a strobe double press this one here and you've got a strobe and the white light okay so let's just turn them off for a moment they turn the strobe off for a moment here and let's just go on so all being well you able to see the brightness behind me so here now you see this little, little column here is the color of the light so I'm, I'm just going to call this like a yellow a yellow light it's more um, easier on the eye then you can go a little bit brighter then to a warm light and then to a what you possibly call a cold um, white light okay so nice and easy and then again this one here press any extinguishes so what I'm going to do now with this other Claris torch which I'm using we're going to go into the darkness <laughs> okay so some some people complain that um if I, if I shine the torch too far in front of you it's way too bright this is, this is the back of the caravan brighter brighter super bright so that's a more of a an ambient yellow sort of light easier on the eye bringing it down a little bit to a cool white light and then a cold bright white light um, and then just turn this off I could be in a dark room couldn't I 
So this is like a night light, easy on the eye light. Or if you want a flashing beacon, And then we brighten up like this. <clears throat> so what we'll do now, I think, we'll take this on its full brightness. Do you remember me showing you before? You can have this like as a bit of a carry handle. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go outside quietly. That is to give you some idea of how bright this is. lot of midges okay let's go back inside shall we right so there you go that's the Claris the WL3 a new model um, Possibly more of a work light rather than a a torch. So this is the torch that I've previewed before. And just to show that I'm not um, cheating. That's how bright this gear is from Claris. Um, super bit kit. Really, really, really good. As ever, I mentioned before, link down there below if you're interested in buying one. Or you want more information. Um... And I dare say, very soon, some people will be copying this sort of format of a light. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.